I found this page after watching a Q-Star video today, and it instantly made me think of this incident that happened about a year ago. For some context, my mother has COPD and normally has to use a wheelchair to get around. Now, this happened before a bad flare-up, but it still affects the story a little. Because my mom has COPD, whenever we need to make a quick run to the stores, she normally sends me in. It was an average day, or so I thought. I had just been to the gym, so I was wearing a pair of yoga pants and a grey tank top that says, Working out because punching people is frowned upon. I'm not a violent person, but I thought the quote was pretty funny. I never dream of hitting someone. As I'm walking around the aisles, gathering her lists of items with one of those small green carrying baskets, I notice a guy come down the opposite way, and he smiles and waves. I'm in a southern state, so this is not considered odd at all. I would oftentimes smile and ask people that are passing by me how they are doing, so I smile and wave back. This man looks like he's in his 30s or 40s. He looks like he hasn't shaved his face for about maybe a week or a little over. However, there were no red flags as far as appearances go. I leave the aisle, walk away towards the next one, and head in. Just a few seconds later, the same man comes down the opposite way, and this is when the red flags start going off because I notice that he didn't have a cart. I start to calm myself, worrying that I'm overreacting when I also notice that he has nothing in his hands. Maybe he went down the wrong aisle, I tell myself. I do that a lot too. However, I'm still worried, so I avoid eye contact, I grab what I want, and hurry to the next aisle pretending that I'm in a rush. I go down another one, and bam, here he comes, his hand still empty. At this point, I have everything I need, but I'm afraid to leave. He has nothing in his hands, and if he's not checking out, what's stopping him from following me out? I'm still trying to tell myself that I'm overreacting, and decided to go prove it to myself. I went over to the section of the store where they had a display of nuts, gluten-free candies, and weird snack items like banana chips. I walk around like I'm about to head into another aisle and stop at the end of the shelves, watching. Each time he came into an aisle, he had come through the opposite side I had. And sure enough, he starts walking down the aisle by the shelves. I quickly shuffle around it with my basket and stand there like I'm looking at the candies. The thing I didn't count on was him not seeing me. I don't know if this was because I'm very short or because he did a quick glance and was confused that I had disappeared. He quickly turned around and headed out of the aisle. Now, alarms start going off in my head. My original plan was to basically hide behind the shelf until I saw him leave, or at least wait for him to try and walk to the other end of the store so I could sneak into the checkout area. Then I hear someone call my name. I turn around to see my mom and niece by the checkout line. My mom is leaning against one of the displays with various houseplants that they have seasonally at this grocery store, and she's out of breath. I quickly hurry over, and my mom demands we hurry up and check out. I wanted to tell her about the man that was following me, but she seemed worked up about something, and I decided I would wait to tell her until I found out what was really going on. As we're checking out, I see the guy walk up and I quickly move closer to my mom, hoping that if he saw I wasn't alone he'd go away. Bad idea. What this guy saw was an out of breath woman, me, a 12 year old girl, and a 5 foot girl that could barely open pickle jars. There was nothing about us that was intimidating at all. He didn't even hesitate as he got into the line next to us, grabbed the candy bar, and stood behind another person in the checkout lane glancing towards us every so often. At this point, I'm not sure what to do. I'm quickly putting my stuff in the belt and trying to hurry. Thank goodness that little old lady that was in the front of the guy had her cart nearly filled to the brim. It gave me enough time to collect everything and let us get out of there. My mom hurried us back to the car, once again losing her breath when we got to it, and demanded for me to get into the driver's seat and drive immediately. At this point, I'm worried someone has gotten hurt or there's been a family emergency. But when we get into the car, she shocked me with what she said next. Did you see that man? I was a bit shocked by the question and started describing the man I had seen. Yeah, did you see him? 
I explained to her that I'd seen him and that he followed me around the store. She started cursing like a sailor, and before I had even pulled out of the parking lot, she had my dad on the phone demanding him to start driving our way just in case the man started following us home. We literally lived just down the road, so it wasn't that big a deal, and I actually drove past my dad on the road in less than five minutes. I asked my mom what made her come into the store, and what she told me chilled me to the bone. She said that the guy was actually coming out of the store as I was going in, but he stopped when I passed him. He turned his head around and made it very obvious he was looking at my, uh, sitting cushions. You know what I mean by that. He then hurried back to his car. My mom watched him quickly stuff his bags into his car and turn around to go back inside. I hadn't even seen the guy when I went in, and the thought that he was actually following me in from the parking lot was a lot scarier, and I couldn't try to convince myself that I was being paranoid anymore. I don't want to think as to how things could have gotten so much worse if I hadn't noticed him turning up in every aisle I was, or if my mom hadn't noticed his behavior before following me back inside, or worse, if he had managed to check out the exact same time as us and had met us at the exit. A week or so before my 10th birthday, I walked to the corner store with a $5 bill and picked up a jar of ragu for my mom. On my way home, a man I'd never seen before fell in step with me and began talking. Hi, he said cheerfully. My name is Dr. Ramsey. I'm a pediatrician. Do you know what a pediatrician is? I walked along silently, not replying and hoping he would take that as a sign that he should leave me alone. Subtleties were not his strong suit, though, because he kept right on chattering. Are your parents looking for a pediatrician for you? Of course, you're almost a big girl now. You'll be needing another kind of doctor soon, won't you? That's okay, though. They could still bring you to me until then. What's your name? You have beautiful hair. I was just on my way to get some suckers for the candy jar in my office. Do you like suckers? Thankfully, we're nearing my house, so I ran forward back up the steps and through the kitchen door. I didn't know it then, but that was the beginning of a very long and very scary ordeal. It didn't take long after that for Dr. Ramsey to begin showing up. At first, it seemed benign enough, at least to a kid. He would drive by nearly every day, smiling and waving. I told my mom who said maybe it was just on his way home from work. But then the phone calls began. My dad called me into the living room and sat me down. He asked about the day Dr. Ramsey followed me home and if I talked to him. He said that I wasn't in trouble but that he needed to tell him the truth. I told him no and he asked if I was sure or that it could be forgetting something. I told him no again and he frowned and then asked. Then how does he know your name? I had no idea. It turns out that wasn't all he knew. He knew my sister's name as well. Pretty soon, neither my sister or I were allowed to answer the phone. He called several times a day. At first, neither of us knew what he was saying. Then, one night, one of my brothers told us that he was telling my parents that he was going to hurt me, and later, my sister. Things got complicated after that. My dad had called the police, but as this was before there were any stalking laws, there wasn't a lot they could do. They told my parents to call back if he quote, tried anything. My dad then called a friend of his from back in the day, who happened to be a cop. For the next month, my dad's friend escorted me to and from school. Suddenly, life as I knew it came to a screeching halt. I couldn't walk to school alone, I couldn't play outside, I couldn't walk to Super America, which is sort of like a 7-Eleven for those of you who don't know. When access to me was completely denied, things escalated. It was around this time that he began threatening my sister as well. Then one afternoon, my sister, two of my brothers and my mom were in the kitchen. One of my brothers saw a glimpse of someone in the garage. They'd seen him too. Dr. Ramsey came bolting out of the garage, my brothers chasing after him. They ran all the way to Cherokee Park where he lost them in the trees. My parents called the police again, but nothing ever became of it. The only information they had was a description and a name that was almost certainly fake. 
A couple weeks later, we woke to find our dog hanging from the side porch. She was a gorgeous saddleback German Shepherd born the same day I was. We were all devastated. The cop said that there was no evidence it was him and ruled it as accidental, but none of us believed that. His phone calls became more informative in the meantime. He would talk about who was home and who wasn't. If my brother would say my dad was home, he would tell him who was really in the house. He would also talk about the house itself, about the window in the kitchen he could easily open with a knife from the outside, even when it was locked, and about the French doors that connected the living room to the side porch and how the lock could be finagled from the outside if you jiggled it just right. That night, my dad put in some carpenter nails at the bottom of the French doors until he could get a new lock ordered. My parents had to go to a company event for my dad's work. My older brothers were at St. West Roller Skating Rink. My sister was on the phone with her best friend, and my little brother was on the floor asleep. I was watching Devo on the midnight special with Wolfman Jack. It was late. Suddenly, the top of the French door swung inward, and in the few milliseconds before the nails in the bottom caused them to snap back, I could see his silhouette. My sister whipped the phone at the television and we ran up the stairs. About halfway up, we realized that our little brother was still asleep on the living room floor. As quietly as we could, we slipped back down the stairs to get him. We all went into our bedroom and didn't turn on the light. This way we could see outside. We watched out the window for a while, and when we didn't find him, we crept down the hall to our brother's room to look. We looked down, and he could see someone standing at the back door. He knocked loudly. What do you want? My sister asked out the window. He stepped back and said, Is this a Mercy residence? I have a pizza for delivery, can you come to the door? She scoffed at him, declaring she was not stupid, she could see he didn't have a pizza and that she was calling the cops. Thankfully, he then left. A short while later, my brothers returned home. We told them what had happened and they walked around the yard watching for him. They came back in and things settled down. By now, we'd pretty much given up calling the cops because it never helped, so we just went back in each of us except my youngest brother still asleep, carrying a knife from the kitchen, just in case. Eventually, one of my brothers went into the kitchen to get a bowl of cereal as a snack. You know that sensation you get when you could just feel someone's watching you? Yeah, he had that in spades. He kept looking around the kitchen, through the doorway into the dining room, at the windows. He didn't see anything, but he could still feel eyes on him so he went closer to the door to try and see better. The kitchen lights were reflecting on the windows of the door. It had three rows of three windows, so he still couldn't see. He stepped closer, and then closer again until he was right up to the door, then cupped his hands on either side of his head so he could see. There, on the other side of the window pane, was Dr. Ramsey smiling back at him. He turned to yell for my older brothers, and when he looked back again, he was gone. They went out again to look for him, but didn't see him. The next night, we were at the table playing Crazy Eights, and my brother was restless. My sister asked him what was wrong, and he said he always felt like any minute now there would be a bang on the door or window. Almost immediately after he finished his sentence, boom, on the window right behind him. In the chaos, the two eldest ran out, but he was already gone. A couple of weeks later, I was at school and we were outside on the playground during recess. I was swinging upside down when I saw that now familiar blue Ford Galaxy cruising by, moving slowly. There he was, smiling and waving. He then called my name and I ran to the teacher to tell her. The school had been told all about him, and she took me inside right away and called my mom. That same day, my mom had gotten a call from the school office asking to verify if my dad was picking me up as he called to say that he was on his way. He wasn't. Not long after that, I woke up one night thirsty. I went down to the kitchen for a drink, and there, sitting alone in the dark, was my dad. On the table, a gun. He was tired of the police until Dr. Ramsey tried something. He was tired of his children being terrorized. He was tired of being afraid every time he left for work that something would happen to us while he was gone. I sat with him for a while, watching before he sent me back to bed. These events, and many more, took place over a period of around 18 months. 
Then, as suddenly as it began, it was over. He had vanished from our lives. The phone calls, the drive-by with the creepy waves, everything. For a long time, during and after the Dr. Ramsey days, I would have a reoccurring nightmare in which I would wake up to find him standing over me as I slept. It took a long time before I felt like a kid again. I don't know what happened to him when he disappeared. I don't know if he was in a car wreck, locked in prison, in a coma. But sometimes, I wonder if the wait had ended for my dad when he was sitting in the darkened kitchen one night. I don't know, and I'm not sure I want to. I'm a student assistant at my university's library, meaning I do the actual librarian's job while they scroll through Facebook. It's not uncommon for my supervisors to go to the back room when it's particularly busy and just leave me and another student to handle the sudden onslaught of 30 students. The thing about this library is that it's fully open to those who aren't affiliated with the university. I don't know why, because the town itself has two libraries, both are very decent, but whatever. What I'm trying to say is that it's not uncommon to go up to the top floor and see a 50 year old man with a huge beer gut trying to chat up some college age girls. The encounter that I'm telling you about happened during a walkthrough. At the end of the night, the supervisors send the students up to all the floors to tell the stragglers that they have to go home because we're closing soon. A lot of the assistants hated this shift because it can be pretty creepy at times. Usually, two assistants would get sent up to do the walkthrough. But this time, it was only me. This night, my boss, who was an elderly woman, was the acting supervisor and she wanted this done by the book. That meant a detailed report of each floor over the walkie-talkie. Except, all of our walkie-talkies have dead batteries because none of the supervisors ever cared to buy new ones. So I'm walking around upstairs with a dead walkie-talkie, making sure everybody knows that we're closing soon, when I see a middle-aged man just sitting at a table, staring at his hands. In a polite manner, I tell him that we're closing soon, and he then nods at me. I could smell the weed on him, which wasn't uncommon. A lot of people from town like to get high in the library, but that's expected if it's open to the public. I think nothing of it and continue my walkthrough, when I suddenly realize that I could hear someone walking behind me, like half sprinting to catch up with me. I keep walking, getting faster because I'm getting uncomfortable and the footsteps behind me get faster too. I'm a naturally paranoid person and immediately assumed that he was going to attack me. So I decided to take the staircase down instead of the elevator and just start going down as he catches up with me. I just kept moving, but I could feel him practically hovering behind me. Suddenly he blew some air at my exposed neck and laughed. I didn't look back, I just kept moving. The entire time he followed me and would sometimes blow air at me or briefly try to make small talk. I could smell beer on his breath. He was so close to me that I was scared he was going to push me down the stairs. When I finally got to the first floor, he just walked away to the entrance and I ran into the back room. I filed a report with my boss. He's been back since, but I've told to just grin and bear it. 